Okay, so one of my other little side hobbies is home automation. I've been doing it for a few years now. I have smart bulbs, switches, thermostats, a lot of different things in the house from a lot of different brands. So instead of using separate apps to control everything, I use a home automation server called Home Assistant. It's just one of those cool things I thought it would be fun to do and see if I can get it to work. And so what I've done is I've taken the automation system and configured it in a way that I can allow Nina to talk to it. So now when I start my sessions in Nina with my advanced sequence, one of the very first things that it does is first it will turn off my front lights both on the house and the garage dim them down to 25% it also will turn off the spotlight that I have shining on my driveway and then moving around to the back of the house I have three lights one above my office one above the patio one above the deck those also dim down to 25% but I have them turning to red so if I'm walking around closer to the house it doesn't affect my night vision I also have an LED strip within the observatory that it'll turn that off as well if it's on and then the ventilation system that I purchased with the observatory has a, a electronic controller in it so I'm also able to turn off my oscillating fan and my exhaust fan before my imaging session starts often with a Nino without me having to do anything besides just hit that play button to start my whole advanced sequence I figured there's probably somebody out there who's doing the same thing that I am and using home assistant if that's you that's what this video is about or just stick around and watch it it's I think it's pretty cool this isn't going to be a home assistant tutorial this is I'm expecting you to already have home assistant up and running and you understand automations and, and everything along with it but i will show you how to configure the piece that i'm using to allow nina to talk back into it as well as what configuration is needed for nina for this auto work but all right i'm rambling again let's get to it my name is rich and you're watching deep space astro Okay, we'll start with an home assistant. Like I said, this isn't gonna be a home assistant tutorial, but I'll show you how to build the node that we're gonna be using to make the call to from within Nina to get our lights to go off and on the way we were talking about. So within home assistant, if you come over to settings and into your add-ons area, I already have node red installed. If you don't, just hit your add-on store down here and then search for your node red and it'll come up for you and you go ahead and do your install. This is the screen you'll see when you do the installation. I have it ticked on to show my sidebar, which is over here. It just makes it easier for me to find it when I need it. And that's it. That's it for the Node Red piece in the Home Assistant. So if we come over and click on Node Red, you'll see the, the, the two workflows that I already have configured that I've been using. But we'll go ahead and recreate these again so you guys know how to get them going. So I'm just going to work on a new tab over here. And the first thing that you want to do is on the left hand side, if you scroll down to the network section and you're going to look for your HTTPN node, drag it over drop it we also want to grab the http response node and drop that one as well and then if we scroll back up to the top we're going to grab the one called action and those are the only three that we need to get this working so we'll start with the http in just double click it and this one you're just going to specify the url name that you want to be in the actual url that we'll be sending from nina over to home assistant to run actions on so for this example i'll just call this one forward slash astronomy on call it whatever you want it's up to you and then click on done the http response is just so we can send a response back to whatever it is that's requesting that url in this case we just want an okay response so we're going to type in 200 for the status code there and click done. Now, before we move into the action, there are many different ways that you can configure this. What I found was easiest for me and also from like a management perspective, as far as keeping things organized, is I just build an automation and I call that automation routine. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we come back over into settings and I go into my automations and scenes, these first two astronomy mode activated and deactivated are my automation routines that we're going to be using in that node workflow. So to show you, if I click on my astronomy mode activated, I have, I've already had this set up for an NFC tag. So if I put my phone up and up against an NFC tag, all of this stuff will run. So why reinvent the wheel when I've already got everything that I need in this in one place and I can call to it through the nodes itself. So, but just to show you what it's doing, the first one here will take all of these lights that I have listed and it'll adjust the brightness to 25%. The next item will take my three backlights and set the color to red. Flood lights get turned off and then my LED strip inside the observatory get turned off as well. And then the final thing it does is shut down my ventilation system. Like I said, I have a, an oscillating fan and an exhaust fan in the observatory. So 
it'll turn those off for me because don't need them to run when I have the shutter open. They're not doing me any good anyways. And then just the opposite, if we back up here and look at my astronomy mode deactivated, it effectively just resets everything back to the way it was before the session started in Nina. So it'll turn the lights back to 100%. It'll turn the ones that were red up to uh, 5,000 K for the color temperature. It'll turn my floodlights back on. It'll turn my observatory LED lights back on and it turns on the ventilation system for me. So that's how I do it. Like I said, there's many different ways of doing it. This I thought was just simpler and it's easier for me to maintain. So with our two automation routines already created within Home Assistant, now we can go back over to that node red and we can open up that action node right here by double clicking on it. Make sure your server is set to Home Assistant. Under action, we're gonna say automation trigger. And under targets, we're gonna click add entity. And when you click on this box right here, you'll see all of the automation routines that you have. So for this one, we wanna turn astronomy mode on. So I'm gonna select my astronomy mode activated automation. Click done. And then up top here, click your deploy button. This one's ready to go. Now to test it, it's extremely simple to test it. You don't need to run it through a Nina sequence to make sure it's working. You can test it right within your web browser. So paying attention to our endpoint part of our URL right here, endpoint slash astronomy on, all we need to do is I'll come up and start a new window in my browser. And then the URL looks just like this. Homeassistant.local colon 1880, which is the port number that node red listens on forward slash endpoint forward slash astronomy on just to point out real quick, I'm not secure on my server. So if you have a certificate, then your URL is going to obviously be HTTPS. I don't do anything external with the server. So I'm not worried about that part of the security. Again, this drop the URL in and if I hit enter. This is the screen that I get, and I can verify that a couple different ways. I can go back up into my dashboard, and I can see that my front lights went to 25%. My garage lights are currently going to 25%. My deck patio and office turned red, flood lights off, and the observatory ventilation system is off. I can also walk outside and verify everything as well, right? Um, the other way you can check it too, is back into your automations. And here's my activated routine that we just called. You can see 34, 35 seconds ago, it was last triggered. So the only thing left to do in Home Assistant is to pretty much go through the setup again, but this time for our astronomy off automation that we wanna call. So we're gonna, uh, just like before, we'll go down to our network, we'll grab the HTTP in, we'll grab the HTTP response, and then back up to the top, we're gonna get the action node in here again, double click on the HTTP in, give our URL and name. I'll just call us astronomy off. Click done. And again, on our request, we want to give it the code 200 and click done. Action. We're going to say automation trigger, add entity. And then this time we're going to grab our astronomy mode deactivated. Click done, connect everything up, and then click deploy. That's it. We're done in Home Assistant. And you can test this one the same way we tested the Astronomy On one. You can grab the URL and just make sure you put Astronomy Off at the end of it and verify that everything in your automation that we were calling and the automation trigger is working. So now we're going to jump over into Nina and show you how to get that set up. So now to set up Nina to make calls out to Home Assistant to run those automations that we just went through. First thing you need to do is come over to your plugins area and make sure you have the Ground Station plugin installed. If you haven't been using this or you don't know anything about it, take a look Look at it there's a lot of cool stuff in here i currently use it to send notifications to my phone via pushover so wherever i want a notification sent i just put that instruction in in my sequence and it also will report if anything was to error out so if i lost guiding and they couldn't resume guiding i'll get an alarm on my phone telling me that it couldn't resume guiding but you can use pushover telegram you can have email sent if this then that web hooks you can make it talk text to speech i have that going a little bit too just because <laughs> so that's why you see a user key and an api token here you don't need it for what i'm showing you today with the home assistant piece but just so you're aware take a look at it it's, it's pretty cool if you haven't used it yet but just go ahead and get that plugin installed once that's done you're ready to go so we'll jump over to my sequencer and show you how i use this so first of all over on the right hand side if we scroll through the list until we find the ground station plugin instructions and triggers what we're looking for to be able to talk over to home assistant is the send http request instruction so I have that as part of my sequence right down here. And if I click my parameters button, you'll see I have that URL that I showed you previously just inserted in the correct field. 
with the method set to get, which which is the default, but just be aware, you don't wanna be on post, you wanna be on get. The other thing that's different from what I showed you when we were testing is I actually use the IP address of my home assistant server. You can use homeassistant.local like I showed you, but it worked for me and then one day it didn't. And it was because for whatever reason, DNS could not resolve the homeassistant.local to the server's IP address. So this is just a way for me to be sure that I know it's always going to run because I don't have to depend on the home assistant.local DNS name uh, to be resolvable. So either way should work. For me, this works 100% of the time. So again, just drop that URL in from your node that you created. Make sure you set to get, hit close, and that's it. As your sequence starts running and it's going through all your instructions, when it hits it, it'll send that over to the node red, and node red will run that automation that it's linked to. On the other side of that, just like I showed you with creating a node for resetting everything back at the end of my session, I have another send HTTP request instruction right here, and this one calls my astronomy mode deactivated. So at the beginning, everything shuts down. At the end, everything goes back to its previous state for me. All right, pretty cool, right? I mean, I think it is anyways. That's one less thing I have to do every night before I start my sessions, run around and shut down lights or dim them and what have you. So guys, the limit with this, whatever you have in Home Assistant, you can use these nodes to make calls from within your advanced sequence or Anita, right? So whatever you want to set up, you can get Anita to control it now. I want to take this time to say thanks to all my members, both here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. Thanks everyone for watching, sharing, commenting, leaving a like. It's all very much appreciated. You guys have grown this channel. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one in clear skies.